Well, our top focus at this hour, Xinjiang is the only Muslim-majority province of China. It is home to the Uyghur Muslims who have uh, lived uh, in strict state uh, surveillance. And China just found another way to control this minority population in Xinjiang. They have launched an anti-halal campaign in the province. Communist Party leaders took an oath to fight a decisive battle against the pan-halal movement. They launched a campaign against halal products to stop Islam from penetrating secular life. China claims that this is to stop extremism. Party officials in the area, the, the capital of Xinjiang, called uh, on government officers to strengthen the ideological struggle and fight the pan-halal tendency, which refers to the extension of halal labeling food that adheres to Islamic law, to non-food items as well. Officials and state media say the growing number of products unnecessarily labeled as halal allows Islamic rituals to penetrate secular life in China. Everyday products like toothpaste and food ingredients are also being labeled halal and must be produced according to the Islamic law. China is aiming to stop that. The campaign comes at a time when China is already under fire for its policies in the Xinjiang province. Uh, rights advocates, researchers and media have documented the use of mass surveillance as well as curtailing of religious freedoms of Muslim minorities, even as the United Nations has pulled up China for ill treatment of this religious minority. In August this year, the UN Anti-Discrimination Committee reviewed China's record over the recent years, citing credible studies. The members expressed deep concern over the treatment meted out to ethnic Uyghurs and other Muslim minorities. They they say that this Uyghur autonomous region of Xinjiang uh, has been turned into uh, something that resembles a massive camp that is shrouded in secrecy, a sort of no rights zone. Beijing maintains that Xinjiang faces a serious uh, threat from rebels and separatists who plot attacks to create tension between the Uyghur minority and the ethnic Han Chinese majority. They claim they are only stopping uh, this area from becoming another Syria. Xi Jinping in the and joining us to talk a little bit more about China's latest decision is Andrew K. P. Leung, international and independent strategist, joining us from Hong Kong. Uh, Andrew, thanks very much uh, for talking to us this afternoon. Now, what do you make of this campaign by the Chinese government and how is this a counter-terrorism policy uh, as it's been called by the Chinese authorities? Well, it's a mixture of various challenges. Of course, the first challenge to China uh, is the um, a rising level of uh, uh, racial uh, uh, violence um, in Xinjiang. I mean, don't forget that China is the nation uh, consisting of uh, 56 minorities. Of course, the largest uh, ethnic group is the Han Chinese, accounting for something over 95% of the population. But nevertheless, there are um, over 50 other minorities, and most of them uh, live in peace and harmony. Uh, in other provinces, uh, for example, in, um, in, 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 in in southern China, in Guizhou, there are lots of uh, minorities groups that are no problems there. So why is this big problem in Xinjiang? It is because Xinjiang used to be rather remote uh, throughout the dynasties, and it's only in recent years that there is an influx of the Han Chinese, and then, of course, the economic development uh, means that a lot of opportunities accrue to the Han Chinese. So there is a, a kind of social uh, divide. Now, the um, current uh, administration is using a kind of um, repressive authoritarian methods uh, to cram down on the uh, on these minority groups. Now, it is um, questionable whether this policy is working, but at the moment, that's, that's what's happening. Right, and of course, the Chinese authorities also pointing out that how they want to stop this area from becoming uh, somewhat, uh, you know, as uh, the ISIS have become in Syria. But what, you know, a lot of uh, experts are pointing out and rights advocates are uh, th that they've do actually documented the use of mass surveillance in several of these minority regions. And is that true that, you know, that approximately two million people, including one million Uyghur Muslims, have been detained in overcrowded camps across this province? Uh, as is being reported widely by the international press. At the moment, the administration is using a kind of um, very tight control 
um, and what is, can be regarded as author, authoritarian means. Now, whether the, these people are detained, uh, well, there are various stories that say that they are being sent on educational classes, and some of them are kept there uh, maybe for a week or so. Um, but as I said, whether this policy is working, it remains to be seen. Um, and don't forget, uh, there are uh, plenty of experiences in other parts of China where the minorities live in great peace with China, preserving their own culture. So I think that there is a, a, a big, big lesson uh, to, to be learned. But meanwhile, um, that's what's happening. And it's the worry then, uh, Andrew, that this population of Uyghurs uh, is sort of being completely dispersed and being brought uh, you know, into obscurity uh, because of the policies of the Chinese government. As you're saying, in other provinces, things are normal. Uh, we also believe that train travel to this area has been heavily restricted. So what exactly is the way out here? Well, the way out is, uh, of course, uh, it's not as if the minority uh, groups um, in China, as I said, there are the Buddhists and there are the, um, the various groups living in other provinces of China. They have got their own culture, they have their own music, their own dress, and they, they, there's no problem there. So I think that there should be a greater de degree of tolerance. Uh, but on the other hand, don't forget that Xinjiang is very, very special. And there is a linkage with the, um, uh, the kind of um, um, separatist movement uh, outside China in Central Asia. Um, and of course, uh, this informs um, this kind of um, pro-independence um, kind of movement elsewhere. So I think that the um, Beijing authorities are um, extremely worried about this, and they are resorting to uh, these uh, authoritarian means. But as, as I said before, whether these uh, policies, uh, current uh, repressive policies are working, uh, remains to be seen.